to come right out and say it. It shouldn't be that controversial, but I suppose it is. Epoxy is gross. Uh, the prevalence in the woodworking community in 2023 going into 2024 is disappointing because epoxy is really gross. <laughs> There are some good uses for it, uh, but in my workshop, I'm trying to reduce my reliance on it unless I absolutely have to. Unfortunately, I work with a lot of Australian woods and Australian woods are known for having some gnarly sap and bark and other inclusions in them. Eucalypts are quite gnarly woods. Sometimes they're quite um, easy to manage. The smaller stuff I can use, CA in various tinted flavors, to fill the gaps so that I have a nice uh, smooth surface. But when you get to a larger knot, unfortunately epoxy is often the only choice, or at least that was the only choice that I was aware of in the past for filling such things. You can get wax sticks that you melt, shellac wax sticks that you melt and put into the uh, voids, but they can get quite expensive and they're harder to find over here in Australia than they are in the US where you can just get them from Mohawk finishing. So I wanted to find a solution for that that was at least stomachable in price and worked quickly. That's something that epoxy does not do. Even the five minute stuff is five minutes working time and it's gonna take at least eight hours to dry and when you're just filling a void, it's just annoying to deal with. Not to mention it's messy and it's stinky and it's just gross. So I found a solution that works for me relatively well and this isn't really a review of the product it's not really a recommendation even because it won't suit a lot of people and that's fine it's more I took a long time before I was aware of this product so maybe some other people would be would appreciate being told about said product and the solution that I found is this hot glue oh, wait no this is the wrong one this is completely different from hot glue it's I mean it comes in stick form and you melt it, but it's not an adhesive, and it's, it's a polyamide uh, filler by Wood Repair, a Danish company, but there are a few other brands, not tech, and I can't remember. This is one that I was able to buy here in Australia. Uh, they all more or less did the same thing. They are more or less hot glue that you've put into it. It dries a fair bit harder than regular hot glue, meaning that you can sand and scrape and plane it much easier than hot glue, which tends to be, at least in my experience, a little bit gummy. So when you're sanding it back, you won't get a nice finish. It's not a cheap system to get into, but it does come in a range of colors for filling various voids, repairing wood, um, and probably other purposes, but I 100% intend to use it only for uh, filling voids. So. We'll go through the process of doing that while I talk about whether this is a good idea or not. So just like any other hot glue gun, you plug it in and then you've got the various glue sticks. The only difference with the standard type of glue gun like this Bosch one, Bosch is 11 millimeter sticks. This is 12 millimeter or half inch sticks. Uh, so if you've got a 12 millimeter gun, it'll work just fine as far as I'm aware. This is the basic model, uh, it's only 80 watts, so it takes a fair bit of time to heat up. It gets to 170 degrees to melt the uh, filler. The pro model would probably be nice to have, but it's even more expensive, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend that unless you really need the speed to heat it up quickly. All right, so this is the void we're working with, a bit of a knot and a sap vein all in one. I'm going to use a black filler stick already loaded into the gun, but they come in these uh, resealable foil bags to keep them uh, nice and fresh. The other thing we'll need is this heat sink. It's a block of aluminium. Don't buy it from the company that sells these because they're very overpriced for literally a block of aluminium. Go to a scrap metal place, get an offcut of aluminium, same dealio. They've got a big paddle one, which is quite ridiculous for how much they want to charge. So we just squirt that in where we need it. Plonk on the aluminium, fill up the rest of it. Get the other aluminium block I've got. And we're almost done. That's just so quick compared to any other form. Just a little bit in there. Any other form of filler. 
We'll just let that cool down just a little bit. Now, the problem is that I haven't used up all of the sticks, so what do you do? You're supposed to reseal these. So the kit that I bought came with this, um, what do they call it? Not filler saver tool. It's a silicon mold for purging it, basically. So you just fill that up. We're just basically using it all up until it won't go anywhere, and that should cool down in half an hour or so. Now, the problem with this is that there's still some left in the gun that you can't push all the way out, so there's going to be some loss. And if I needed to change colour, I'd just have to ram in another colour and sort of purge it until it was running whatever the other colour is, the new colour. I'm mostly going to be using black filler for knots and sap veins and things like that, so it's not a huge deal for me. But it'd be nice if there was like a heat resistant rod to like push it through or something. I don't know. It's fine. Um, better than nothing, I suppose, but it could be better again. So I need to get the excess uh, filler out or off the surface. You can definitely sand that back if you want to, but there are quicker ways. Uh, the kit that I bought came with their flush trim tool, which looks pretty much exactly like my flush trim tool, but I have this now and I can dedicate it to it. So there's that. You probably want to come in just from the sides and have sort of a slicing action rather than chiseling so you don't pull it out. But that, that's done. Um, it'd be great if I could reuse this, you know, melt it down. But it has collected a little bit of gunk uh, just from the wood. But that's taken just, I don't know, five minutes including heating time to fill this knot. Whereas I'd still be waiting for the epoxy to get a little bit stiff in this time, let alone the next eight hours where it isn't fully hardened. Now, if you want to get to the nitty gritty, there are a couple of spots that I uh, accidentally did pull it out of. Let's see here, there's a few spots and here and here. So I could come back with my CA glue and fill that in or go another round of the not filler adhesive melty doohickey stuff and put that in and just be a little bit more gentle when I'm doing that slicing action. But you know, that's not a gaping void like it was before. One thing I do want to draw your attention to is that there's no staining around where the filler went in. That's a big issue with the tinted CA and especially with tinted epoxy. If you're not careful, you can get a lot of staining around where the void is filled in. So often you'll just go for clear epoxy so that you're not messing everything else up. Now, as I mentioned, this is not a review. It is not a product recommendation, quite the opposite. I probably wouldn't recommend this to everybody uh, as the buy-in is pretty expensive. I think if you could get the knot filler things for a little bit cheaper and could find a, a appropriate uh, gun that is not the wood repair brand, but you know, meets the requirements, uh, that might be fine then. But it is an expensive system. I'm glad I've got it and I will continue to use it. I'll continue to buy the kind of expensive <laughs> filler sticks, but for a lot of people, CA, the tinted CA and epoxy are gonna be a better choice. Just from an economics point of view, epoxy, while it isn't the cheapest material when you're not making plastic monstrosities and just filling wood, it is relatively cheap in that it goes a long way and lasts a long time but I'm much happier not having to futz around with eight hours cure time minimum type thing for non-structural things. For structural things where I need the waterproofness of epoxy or um, other mechanical advantages that epoxy affords you, absolutely epoxy is great for that. For this type of thing, this is genuinely speeding up my workflow uh, on furniture projects so I can just get on with it and not have to take a break. I, you know, five minutes turnaround and I filled it, I can sand it. Apparently it's completely stainable as well. If you sand it first, open it up a little bit, uh, you can then stain it just like you would with wood. Apply your top coat, whatever. I've applied top coats to this before and noticed no difference between it, epoxy, or even wood for that matter. End of the day, it's just another tool in the tool bag. So maybe it's the right thing for you, maybe it's not. Maybe you already knew about this and I'm just 
talking too much. Maybe you learned something. Either way, thanks for watching.